Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we are talking about organizing your medical records and healthcare information. 80% of patient medical bills contain errors, so you don't want clutter and disorganization here. Learn more as we start our month focusing on health and wellness. Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., hear easy to implement tips on decluttering all areas of your life physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic. Learn how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award winning professional organizer and coach, Julie is passionate about supporting people in clearing clutter so they can share their gifts with the world and live a more joyful and fulfilling life. I am someone who checks every purchase on my monthly credit card statements. A few months ago, we discovered the pizza delivery man was adding tips to our credit card, although we always gave cash tips. It was $5, but that can add up quickly. If you aren't paying attention, you could be overcharged on not only doctor's visits, that happened to me even though my copay was right on my health insurance card, but also on exams and surgery. According to Medical Billing Advocates of America, 80% of patient medical bills contain errors. If you are organized, you will be on top of everything and know if you're being overcharged. It will also help bring you peace of mind. At the end of September, I had surgery. I was at the doctor's office on Friday and surgery was scheduled for Wednesday. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare, but because I know how important it is to be organized, I started a file to keep track of everything. Online organization. Both of my doctor's offices have all medical records, medical history, and billing online, and they are both organized by category and pretty easy to navigate. First, take the time to familiarize yourself with the website and understand how they are set up. Look through each of the tabs and understand how they categorize. Just because it is online doesn't mean they won't be making mistakes. I had asked for a short extension to pay a large bill. They granted it, but then I got a notice asking why it wasn't paid, both via mail and email. Luckily, all of my correspondence was in my email folder and I could refer them to that. If you communicate with your doctor or health insurer via email, you can designate a folder in your email to keep all correspondence. If you have a lot of correspondence, designate an email address and create more specific folders. For example, caracciomedical at gmail.com might have folders with Julie Surgery, Tony Surgery, Insurance Paid, etc. You will always want to check with your accountant, attorney, healthcare advocate, etc. about how long you should retain records. Health records. While it's great that I have all of my medical correspondence and files online, I still get explanation of benefits, EOBs, and other correspondence from my health insurance, so it is worth taking the time to come up with the system. It's important to keep track of any legal or financial paperwork. You will want contact numbers and addresses, insurance information, and account numbers easily available. When I call my insurance, I write down the name, date, and the time of the person I spoke with on the EOB or other correspondence. I am also going to suggest being proactive and creating a family health record. About 18 months ago, my husband went to the ER for chest pains. Thankfully, he wasn't having a heart attack. On Veterans Day, he complained of chest pains again and we went to the doctor. We were fortunate that they had all our records available because the emergency room we went to is affiliated with our doctor's office, but that isn't always the case. Creating a family health record. Prepare for an emergency by gathering vital details about health for each person and pet in your family. Create a medical reference file that includes birth date, doctor's names and phone numbers, and insurance information. Compile a list of current health, allergies, including food, 
major health problems and surgeries, and medical histories. Include prescriptions and over-the-counter medicines, dietary and herbal supplements, and vitamins and minerals. For each, give the name of the doctor who prescribed it, why you are taking it, how much you take, and any special instructions. For past medical health, include childbirth history, immunizations both as a child and adult, health screening results such as blood pressure, cholesterol, vision, and hearing, cancer screenings such as pap tests, mammograms, colonoscopy, and PSA tests, hearing and vision checkups, medicines you've used in the past. If you are an organ donor, I would keep a copy here as well. Also include advanced directives that outline your decisions about health care. I will provide some general information, but urge you to consult with an attorney and or your health care advisors. Living wills and advanced directives describe your preferences for end-of-life care. These documents speak for you when you're not able to speak for yourself. They are written legal instructions regarding your desires for medical care. Advanced care directives guide choices for doctors and caregivers if you're terminally ill, seriously injured, in a coma, in the late stages of dementia, or near the end of life. By planning ahead, you can choose the medical care you prefer, avoid suffering and unburdened caregivers of decision-making during moments of crisis or grief. By being clear, your loved ones can avoid confusion or disagreement. My parents have already done this, and I can tell you it has given my brothers and me a great sense of relief. We would always want to honor their wishes, and we won't have to do any second guessing. Power of attorney. A medical or health care power of attorney, durable power of attorney for health care or health care proxy, the name will vary by state, names who you want to make decisions for you when you are unable. You could choose to name a spouse, child, family member, friend, or member of your church or synagogue. You may also choose alternates in case the person you choose is unable to fulfill his or her obligations. Even if you have other legal documents regarding your care, not all situations can be anticipated and some situations will require someone to make a judgment about what they believe you would choose. Living Will a living will is a written legal document that spells out medical treatments you would and would not want to be used to keep you alive, as well as other decisions such as resuscitation or organ donation. Some possible end-of-life care decisions in your living will. Resuscitation restarts the heart when it is stopped beating. Mechanical ventilation takes over your breathing if you're unable to do so. Tube feeding supplies the body with nutrients and fluids intravenously or via a tube in the stomach. Dialysis removes waste from your blood and manages fluid levels if your kidneys no longer function. Antibiotics or antiviral medications can be used to treat many infections. Comfort care, palliative care, includes any number of interventions that may be used to keep you comfortable and manage pain while abiding by your other treatment wishes. Organ and tissue donations for transplantation can be specified in your living will. Donating your body for scientific study can also be specified. Do not resuscitate and do not intubate orders. You don't need to have an advanced directive or living will to have do not resuscitate, DNR, and do not intubate, DNI orders. Make your preferences known to your physician who can write with the orders and put them in your medical record. Again, check with your attorneys and your doctor. Creating advanced directives. Advanced directives need to be in writing. Links to state-specific forms can be found on the website of the American Bar Association and the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization. Keep a copy in your safety deposit box as well as your health care files. Give a copy to your doctor, health care agent, and any alternate agents. Keep a record of who has your advanced directives. Carry a wallet-sized card that indicates you have advanced directives, identifies your health care agent, and states where a copy of your directives can be found. Keep a copy while traveling. Looking to change your life? Are you ready to release all your clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual? Our Declutter Your Life is a year-long how-to go at your own pace workbook course to guide you through the process of clearing clutter 
also available by three-month individual topic. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Physician orders for life-sustaining treatment. In some states, advanced healthcare planning includes a document called Physician's Order for Life-Sustaining Treatment, POLST. The document may also be called Provider Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment or Medical Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatment, MOLST. Your doctor fills out this form. A POLST is for people who've been diagnosed with a serious illness. This form does not replace other directives, but serves as doctor-ordered instructions, not unlike a prescription, to ensure that, in case of an emergency, you receive the treatment you prefer. If you are in a hospital or nursing home, the POLST is posted near your bed. If you are living at home or a hospice care facility, the POLST is prominently displayed where emergency personnel or other medical team members can easily find it. Your doctor will fill out the form based on the contents of your directives, discussions with your doctor about the likely course of the illness, and your treatment preferences. Issues covered in a pulse may include resuscitation, mechanical ventilation, tube feeding, use of antibiotics, request not to transfer to an emergency room, request not to be admitted to the hospital, and pain management. A POLST also indicates what advanced directives you have created and who serves as your health care agent. Your attorney should retain copies, and as I mentioned earlier, I would also suggest storing in a safe or a safety deposit box or file. I am planning on writing my obituary because I want it to be funny and offbeat and want it to include what is important to me. If there are certain things that you would want included in your obituary, I would keep that information in your health records as well as any funeral arrangements. Keep in mind your digital afterlife as well and include any instructions for your loved ones about social media and also include passwords and any other relevant information. Have conversations with your family. We have started these conversations with my parents and I am grateful for all they have done. It's going to make our lives a lot easier when they pass so we can concentrate on grieving. I'm also going to advocate if you are having surgery, have regular doctor's appointments, or are supporting someone in managing their health care, try and be, or have someone at every doctor's meeting. When I got the news I needed surgery, I was by myself. I had told my husband not to come because it was a routine exam. When the doctor told me I needed an operation, my mind went fuzzy. I also had to sign some paperwork about my risk. As you or your loved one might not be able to remember everything, have someone there to compile notes. Ways to organize your health care records. There are many ways to organize your health care records. Do what makes the most sense to you, fits with your lifestyle, and that you are the most likely to maintain. I am a fan of an accordion file as you can create different categories but still have all your information easily at hand. Most have an area or pocket where you could put the information used often, such as health account numbers on the front, or you can tape an index card. This is something that would work really well for, say, a surgery as you will have different types of paperwork and usually a lot of it. You could also create different folders and keep in one hanging green folder. I am a fan of color coding and would suggest using that as well. Most of us are visual learners and an easy look at color will direct us to where we need to go. Create an index file so others in the family will be able to locate what they need. You could use a three ring binder. File how it makes sense to you. I have a very easy filing system. My main drawers are personal, work, and financial. I have health records under personal, but for someone else, it might make sense to have with finances. You may choose to organize by category, EOB, billing statements, etc., or organize by date, everything for the year 2016, or illness, Julie's surgery. I would recommend a file for each family member as well as your pets. Don't forget to label. Label how you would go searching for something. Julie's surgery makes a lot more sense to me than surgery September 2015. If you prefer using electronics, something like Evernote is great because it has such a great search capacity and you can create filing cabinets just as if you had a physical filing cabinet. As I always like to say, do your own research, but here are some online health records management systems. Minerva Health Manager, 
WebMD Health Manager, Access My Health, Healthy Companion, and Health Vault. Some questions to consider asking when finding a system. I found these questions from AHIMA Personal Health Record Practice Council. Will the personal health record provide all the information I need for a complete health history? Will information be automatically added to the PHR from any other records, insurance, employment, or care? If so, what information will be added and how will it be added? Is the information transfer audited? Do I have the opportunity to delete, correct, or add information? How will I do this? Does the personal health record sponsor have any ownership rights to the collected information? Can the PHR sponsor sell my information to anyone or for any reason? If so, how can I protect my privacy? Can I specify that my information not be sold? Will my information be used for employment or insurance coverage decisions, i.e. to determine insurance eligibility? Who has access to the information in my personal health record? Can I choose to give my doctor, dentist, and other caregivers access? How do I control the sharing of my information? How will my information be protected from unauthorized use? If I am no longer employed or insured by you, can I still continue to use a personal health record? How can I transfer my information to another PHR sponsor, a new insurer or new vendor? Will there be any cost for me to have a personal health record with you? For instance, are there fees if I give my doctor, dentist, and other caregivers access to my personal health record? Create a portable health record. In an emergency, this could save your life. Make a wallet-sized card and keep next to your insurance card. Include emergency contacts, health insurance information, doctor's names and numbers, and any allergies and medications taken regularly. You could also keep this information if you carry a planner or use a smartphone. ICE, I-C-E, is an acronym that is used for people to locate information. EMTs are trained to check the refrigerator, so put a copy there as well. Takeaways from today's podcast. Be proactive and create family health records that include health insurance and doctor's information, current and past health histories and records, medications, allergies, and advanced directives. There are many ways to organize your health care records. Do what makes the most sense to you, fits with your lifestyle, and that you're the most likely to maintain. If you're going with a personal health record online management system, ask questions when choosing. Create a portable health record to keep with you at all times. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Thanks for listening to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of our 10 clutter-free living tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's services including coaching, classes, affirmations, aromatherapy, and her unique How to Declutter Your Life course and more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Don't forget to subscribe and join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.